Hello there, this is Dimitris Christou and I'm back with another Blender video tutorial and I've started a new blog and this is called uh, graphicsdaily.blogspot.com and I'll be uploading some files, hopefully daily made with various software I'll be using Blender, Cinema 4D, Mandelbulb for fractals and all that so, time to see how I've put together my first image for my uh, new blog. So let's begin, we have the default scene here open and the default cube selected. I'll hit the delete key and select delete to delete the default cube. And I'll hit shift A and add mess a torus. Alright, let's take a close look at the torus and i'm going to change the major segments you can see i'm at the bottom left corner here i'll change them from 48 to 64 and i'll also change the minor segments from 12 to 16. all right looking good i hit one and then five on my numeric keypad for the front of the view and hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and what I'll also do is click this little icon so that I'm selecting both the uh, points that I'm seeing and both the points that are hidden. I'll hit the A key to deselect all and then hit B. Click and drag, select the top rows here and hit delete and select delete vertices. Okay, looking good. I'll hit control tab for the mesh select mode and check face. Now I'll move down to select, click select and select random. We have the random percentage of the selection here. I'm going to bring this one down to 30%. What I'll do now is click extrude individual to extrude the individual uh, faces that are selected and hit the right mouse button to cancel any movement of the extruded faces. What I'll also do is move down here and select individual origins. Okay. Now I'll hit the S key to scale down the selected faces, the extruded selected faces, and let's extrude them a bit. All right. And again, extrude individual. Let's extrude them out by a tiny bit. Okay. Extrude individual again. Let's extrude them out slightly. Okay. And hit the S key to scale the extruded faces down and about here. Extrude individual again. Right mouse button click to cancel any movement. And I'm hitting the S key to scale down the extruded faces. Alright. Extrude the individual again. Let's extrude them up. Alright. Extrude individual again. Right mouse button click to cancel the movement. S to scale the extruded faces down. And about here and extrude individual again let's extrude them out slightly and about here all right looking good now I'll move down to select and select more you can hit control numpad plus well my numpad plus doesn't work so i'm going to click select more 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 couple more times and select more and then hit age to hide the selected faces okay again select and let's select random let's select 40 percent this time around all right I'm following the same workflow here, extrude individual, 
right mouse button click S to scale the individual faces, the extruded faces down, extrude individual again, move them up, extrude individual again, right mouse button click to cancel any movement, scale them down and about here. What I'll do now is hit W for the specials menu, click subdivide, let's subdivide them and extrude individual, right mouse button click to cancel any movement and you can see that I've subdivided the uh, selected face here so now I'm having four. I'll hit the S key to scale down the extruded faces and about here, okay. Extrude individual, let's extrude them down slightly and about here. And once more, extrude individual, move them a bit more down and then hit the S key to scale them down and about here. Okay. Now I have those faces selected. Let's move over to the materials to do something. I'm adding a material to the torus and I'm going to add another one, click new. Let's change the diffuse color for this one. I'm going to hit assign while those faces here are selected to assign the selected material on the selected faces. And I think we're good. Now select more, select more, select, more, select, more, select, more, and one more time, okay, and I'm hitting H to hide those faces as well. Move over to select again, select random, and this time around I'm going to select, let's go for 70%, okay. Now extrude individual, hit S to scale down the extruded faces, I've hit the right mouse button to cancel any movement for the extruded faces, extrude individual again, and about here, and extrude individual, okay. Hit S to scale the extruded faces down slightly. Extrude individual. Hit S to scale them down. And about here. Extrude individual again. Extrude them out or down. Extrude individual again. Okay and hit the S key to scale the inner face here down. Now we have the faces selected, let's keep them selected. Hit plus for another material, click new. And this is material.003. I'm going to change the diffuse color, let's make it a nice bright yellow. All right. And while the faces are selected, I'm hitting assign to assign the selected material on the selected faces. Alright. Now you can also move on and hide those and then add. Let's do it. Let's do it. Select more. Select more. Select more. Select more few more times, okay, and then hit the AIDS key to hide them, and here we have the remaining faces, hit the A key to select them all, let's extrude individual, right mouse button click to cancel any movement, hit the S key to scale them down, okay, now hitting W and select subdivide, to subdivide the selected faces, extrude individual, 
right mouse button click to cancel any movement, scale them down, and again, I'm using the individual origins setting, so I'm scaling the faces in their place in their their own origin. And finally, extrude individual. Let's extrude them slightly. I think we're good at about here. You can also add a deeper material to those faces, but I think we're good here. So now I'm going to hit Alt Aids to make all my uh, faces here appear and hit the Tab key to switch from Edit to Object Mode and you can see what we're getting. All right. Now let's find the camera, right mouse button click to select it. I hit Alt G to clear the location and Alt R to clear the rotation for the camera. And I'll hit RX and 90 to rotate my camera. 90 degrees on the x-axis. What I'll also do is select the torus here, hit the tab key, hit the A key to select all and let's change this one to 3D cursor now. And I'm going to scale this one, let's scale it up, make a better object. And I'm scaling it four times on every axis. Now tab, select the camera, I'm hitting 7 on my numeric keypad for the top author view. Hit Z to grab the camera. Let's move it at about here. And 0 for the camera perspective view. Let's take a look through the camera. I'm moving over to the camera transform option. I'm going to bring the Z down. Let's move it closer to the bottom of the torus at about here. I'll also move the camera up slightly. Okay, and I'm also going to add some rotation on the Y axis and tilt the camera just by a bit. Okay, I'll also move to the camera settings. I'm going to change the focal length. Let's bring it down so we can fit more of our scene in our frame. I think we're good at about 14 to 15. Okay, looking good. Now let's take care of the materials. Those materials here are simple placeholders. Let's first of all change from Blender Render to Cyclic Render. Select the object, the torus, and move over to the materials. Now we have the first material. Click Use Nodes. And for this one, we'll be using simple materials. The first is diffuse BSDF for the surface. It's, this is how we want it to be. We have this one. I'll leave this one to diffuse as well. And for the final one, I'm going to click use nodes. And I'll change this one to emission because we want this one to emit some light in the scene. Now I'll move over to the world options, click use nodes, surface is set to background and I'm going to turn this one up so we're having some nice illumination for the scene. All right. What I'll also do is move over to the render options. Let's try uh, adding some freestyle, simple stuff again and Let's leave it to absolute and I'm going to bring the line thickness down. Let's set it to 0 0.3 from 1. Okay. I'm going to change the device for the cycle render from CPU to GPU compute. And what I'll also do is move down to sampling, change the render samples. Let's set them up to 40 just so we can render an image to take a look here. What I'll also do is select the lamp, hit Alt-G and Alt-R for the lamp to clear the position and the rotation for it. And hit G and Z to grab and move the lamp on the Z-axis. Alright. Let's move to the lamp options. Yeah, click use nodes, emission and all that, cast shadow. Alright. I'm hitting 0 for the camera perspective view. 
and let's render an image to take a look. I'm going to set this one to 1280 to 720 and let's see. Hit render. Okay, looking good. Let's wait for the freestyle and this is how it looks. Pretty interesting. Now we can also add some compositing. Let's do it quickly. I'm splitting the 3D view and sending the right part 3D view into a node editor. Hit the N key to hide this panel here. And we want to use the compositing nodes. Click use nodes. We have the composite and render layers. So let's put them apart. Shift A to add output viewer so we can see what we're doing here. Okay. So, connect the render layers to the viewer and hit Shift A. And let's add filter, let's add a clear node. Okay. And let's also check the backdrop. All right. Now the glare is set to streaks. Let's leave it at streaks. Bring the streaks down to two, and let's also bring the threshold down so that we're having the effect taking place. Okay. And I think think we're good at about here. All right. You can also add some depth of field effect here. The, uh, it will probably look pretty nice. Now shift A. Let's add distort and lens distortion. Okay, connect this one as well. I'm going to change this one to projector. and set the dispersion up to 0 0.2 okay while the lens distortion is selected i'm going to hit shift d for a duplicate and this will be not a projector lens distortion type i'll bring the dispersion down i don't want to have any dispersion for the for this one but I'll bring the distort down, let's bring it to minus 0 0.1 and I've used this one before, this one kicks the middle of the image a bit back so we have some nice and interesting distortion okay and finally what we will add is hit shift A and add color, let's add brightness and contrast put it here of course, to, in order to have everything and the compositing nodes affecting the final render, you have to take the output of the final node and make it an input of the composite node. And let's set the contrast, let's set it up to 2 or perhaps 5. All right. Now, this is it. This is our scene here put together. And you can create all sorts of interesting corridors here. I've just built something for you to see. And you can experiment with the materials and the light settings and all. What I'm going to do is bring the sky color up a bit. So we're having a brighter image. I'm going to render a final image to see. Okay, looking nice. And of course, you have to increase the samples, the render samples, to get a better result. As you can see, we're having lots of noise here, so feel free to work with it, feel free to experiment with it. 
This is Dimitris Christou and thanks for watching.